I'd just like to talk to you a little bit about the annual cost of weed management to Queensland producers. Acreforce Queensland is a state farming organisation that represents broadacre growers. It's our grain growers, our sheep and our cattle producers. In 2013, we conducted a web survey of our broadacre members to establish the costs of weeds on their properties. We had 176 responses from producers. Most of them, 75% were beef cattle producers, 19% were grain growers or mixed grain and beef producers, 4% sheep, and we had a couple of, 2% uh, loosened hay growers. Where were they located over Queensland? Where the weeds grow. So I suppose we had about half coming from southeast Queensland, the responses, a quarter from north Queensland, 20% from central Queensland, and only 6% from southwest Queensland. But in those areas, it, there's not that many weed issues. I mean, they might have some of the native weeds, the mulga and everything, but there's not that many weeds out in that kind of Charleville uh, country out the back of southwest Queensland. So that must probably indicate the response. Time spent on preventing weeds. Producers realise the importance of, of preventing. On average, producers are spending 30 days per year preventing weeds establishing. The responses to the survey showed that most of the producers are taking practical biosecurity steps, such as using clean fodder, only feeding fodder out uh, in, in designated areas and checking those, quarantining incoming stock, and requiring any incoming equipment and vehicles to be washed down. Many insist on only using farm vehicles around the property, uh, to move around the property. So they might say, park your, your car there and only use our, our vehicles when you come on property, especially in the areas like giant rat's tail and things like that. Seeds and mud and also spread of sticky seeds like giant rat's tail grass are minimised by only mustering when the ground's dry, wherever possible. There's a lot of time spent on surveillance for those few uh, outbreaks, and that's where a lot of time goes. In our survey, it, only, it indicated only 23% of our producers use voluntary weed hygiene declarations or wash down certificates. Producers tend to focus on doing more than reporting or record keeping. Um, I think the coexistence with other land users, such as the resource sector, and, and service utilities has triggered the need for some of these weed declarations on property. And we're starting to see a little bit of increase in the use. The current severe drought though, over 80% of Queensland, has called on substantial fodder movement, either purchased or donated. So when faced with sourcing fodder to feed drought affected stock, animal welfare and survival are the utmost and the risk of weed seed spread kind of drops off a little bit. So in, in difficult situations and, and people are desperate, it's difficult to consider only using clean fodder or insisting that that, that fodder that's coming in on the property is, has got a weed hygiene declaration. So producers and industry really anticipate a rapid expansion of our, some of our pasture weeds uh, spreading when this drought breaks, and we've got to prepare for that. Other issues that the producers highlighted, highlighted in the response to the survey was that they do have concern over the weeds dropping from vehicles or, uh, when, vehicle, uh, when vehicles are going across public shire roads that go across the property or vehicles using public reserves nearby and then travelling near their property. And many of the public and many people out there are not aware of some of those problematic weeds for our producers. I mean, does everyone know how to identify African lovegrass, giant rat's tail grass, greater grass, and parthenium? With um, the increasing risk of plant and livestock diseases to our agriculture, and the growth, especially of the coal seam gas industry across Queensland, it's triggered many producers into more action and thinking about biosecurity preparedness. One example is that Animal Health Australia, Plant Health Australia, industry and government have combined resources and they've developed some useful templates and signs for producers to use. The Farm Biosecurity website and the Livestock Biosecurity Network have a whole range of these user-friendly user templates for producers and information. 
And of course, Biosecurity Queensland and many other resources do have a lot of information about weed identification and control. Now getting down into the nitty gritty uh, values, the on-farm cost of weed management. The take home message today, when we surveyed or got the responses from 176 uh, producer members, predominantly beef cattle producers and crane producers and a few sheep producers, it showed that they are spending on average $44,400 per year on weed management. This is major annual expenditure, considering the return on investment is low. I mean, even considering today's good cattle prices, that's about the sale of at least 30 head of cattle or more. We found some regional differences, though. There are additional costs for the North Queensland producers because they were dealing with woody weeds, such as prickly acacia and rubber vine. There were two producers that indicate they were spending more than $200,000 per year on doing prickly acacia and calotrope. Actually, Rodney and Wendy Barrett just gave me some figures earlier today, even though they're on the survey, but that they showed that they are spending $98,000 per year for, for woody weed control in the Bowen region. So there's outliers. This is just an average, but it's a fairly large range. Treating invasive pasture weeds, such as giant rat's tail grass and in southeast Queensland and central Queensland, that added another $16,000 to that annual weed expenditure. A few of our grain growers are dealing with weeds such as flax leaf feebane and herbicide resistant feather top roads grass. They're spending at least 60 to 100,000 per year on, on weed management. Productivity losses. We asked our, our producers, can you kind of give us an estimate of, of your productivity losses? A lot of producers had difficulty kind of putting a value or, or estimating the actual numbers, but we did get some responses. I'd like to share those with you and some were down into adults' equivalents per year on, on lost ca carrying capacity. Generally, for the ones that responded, there, there, there is a 34% reduction in carrying capacity because of weeds. Dense woody weeds, as we've heard before, and we've heard must probably more, and we'll see, they can, it can reduce carrying capacity to 50% or more through lost pasture production. And the scary thing, things like giant rat's tail grass and lipia, um, can totally dominate paddocks and just exclude all the grasses and 100% loss of carrying capacity. And some people have had to just move away from their blocks. So bring on the GRT work, John, and the fertiliser. That looks exciting. You might save some people. Weeds, we said. Weed prevention, 30 days a, a year on average. On top of that, weed management, if you've got established weeds, is costing people another 47 days per year in, in doing that type of work. There are regional differences again. Of course, North Queensland, more woody weeds, bigger areas. They're spending 53 days a year on average, running around managing their woody weeds. Uh, the other regions in Queensland still up there. Down to southwest Queensland, remember they don't have as many weeds, possibly. That's why we're down a lot less, 25 days there. On top of, um, hang on a sec. Um, I suppose the other thing is the producers said that on average, they're treating about 25% of their area, of their property area per year. We have a range of property sizes, as you well know. Uh, South East Queensland, smaller property sizes. They're still treating about 25% or 30% of their property every year. As we all know, you can chip off what you can and you go back and manage it, or that's, that's the area that they're getting around each year. North Queensland producers, the ones that responded, their average was about 22, over 22,000 hectares. They're still treating about 2,000 a year hectares a year, and that also must probably factors in the time too. It must probably takes a bit longer to get around 2,000 hectares than 450 hectares. Depends on the weed and the intensity of the weed. Once again, there's a little bit less time in, uh, in southwest Queensland. We asked our producers, what are your main weeds of concern? We had a response of about 75 different weed species. And it depends on your region and commodity as to the main weeds that, that affect people. This is a list from the graziers. It's a bit different to the grain growers, I'll show you soon. So what we see here is for, for our graziers in the North Queensland, we, we're seeing predominantly our woody weeds as their priorities, 
Parthenium as well, but most of our woody weeds. And we transition through central and southeast Queensland. We start to get some of our grasses, giant rat's tail grass, African love grass, some of Parthenium, uh, are some of those issues. Still some woody weeds. Moving towards southwest Queensland, we start to see some of our cactus and succulents becoming their main weeds of concern. Mother of millions and some of our cacti, Heresia's cactus. It's interesting to note Heresia cactus coming up as a, a weed of concern and the top five weed of concerns when we look at all our responses here in central Queensland and southwest Queensland. After the late 1980s, this pest cactus was very low in density. I think 2% of the area of, the, of Queensland affected. It was due to the staff from the Land Protection, oh, sorry, Department of Lands. It was the Heresia Cactus Eradication Scheme. They had staff going out, moving a biocontrol agent, a little mealy bug, around the state to try to effectively control that Heresia cactus. Before that, it was very thick. It was like the photos we saw earlier today from John. After the 1980s, the government said, well, we've spent enough, it's down to very low density, we're handing the responsibility back to, to landholders to continue to spread that little fragile mealy bug from clump to clump to help it to distort the growing tips. You know, landholders take over now, you can manage it. No or limited timely action happened by landholders. And it has resulted in a resurgence of Heresia cactus starting to come back 30 years after a very successful program. Message, weed management needs years of follow-up and surveillance and never let your guard down. So pest cacti and some of the toxic mother of millions are a really big problem uh, coming through in the southwest. And I've recently fielded some phone calls from producers quite distressed. The, the few stock they've got left, mother of millions is flowering at the moment, most toxic time, and they're losing stock. It's very, very difficult. So that's some of the issues we face. For our grain growers, as I say, AgForce represents grain growers, they've got a different caboodle of weeds. But just for information, they're weeds of concern. Feathertop rose grass, uh, parthenium, and flaxweed fleabane, fireweed, barnyard grass are their top weeds of concern. We also asked the producers, what are your main weed management methods you're using out there? Once again, we've got the the herbicides is still the main method used by most of our producers. Foley applied herbicide, applied by I think 82% of our producers, um, around about the 40 or just over 40%, the soil applied residual, and also the, the basal bark stem injection cut stump methods of, of herbicides. Other common methods were as our mechanical control. Um, we've got mechanical, you know, blade plow, dozer, grubber, or similar. Uh, some 20% doing slashing, grazing manage management being used by about 40% of our producers. Our grain growers, of course, are using uh, techniques like crop rotation and pre- and post-emergent herbicides. Most producers have moved away from fire, with only about 25% uh, indicating that they're using fire as one of their integrated tools for, for weed management. Although all our producers would love biological control, there's about 15% that are using it in their weed management programs. So I suppose in summary, weeds are an uh, ongoing major cost and concern to Queensland producers, we know that. We see the flavour of the government change in different programs and different uh, funding cycles, but weeds are still a major cost and concern, as well as feral animals, but we're talking weeds. Prevention is necessary and worthwhile, investment and time, and established weeds create that vicious cycle of ongoing annual expenditure in weed management and quite large expenditure, especially for some of our producers where the margin, there is marginal return on investment. Weeds re reduce our profitability and, and productivity, we know that. Weed spread prevention requires everyone to do their bit. And we were talking about this general biosecurity obligation. Do they? Will they? Will we all do that? Will every producer, everyone out there, from our globe troppers, globe trotters, our fly-in, fly-out workers, tourists, contract workers, neighbouring properties, whether they're farmers, lifestyle, or urban, uh, or other land users, 
It's a, where it's a bit of a daunting task to stop that weed seed spread. It costs, weeds cost us, where our producers, time and money. And I'd just like to acknowledge just what, what's going in to what they're putting into the, their, that control. So a question back to you. What's the take-home message? What was about the annual cost of control for, for weed management for our producers? Anyone remember? Yeah, around about that $44,400 was what we worked out from our survey. Thank you.